Ezekiel chapter 40, verse 1. And you'll see when we read the verse why I chose this verse as the basis for this message. In the 25th year of our captivity, at the beginning of the year, on the 10th day of the month, now their calendars were a bit different from ours, in the 14th year after the city was captured, on the very same day, the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he took me there. And may he add his blessing to the reading and delivering of his word today. There's a cartoon strip that runs in several newspapers called Angus and Phil. <coughs> Angus and Phil are two dogs that talk. And Angus and Phil, most of the time, have funny conversations between themselves. That's why they're in the funny papers. But every now and then, Angus and Phil will have a serious talk. And they were having a serious talk one time on New Year's Day. And Angus asked Phil, well, Phil, we've got another year. What do you want from this year? And Phil answered, another year. Another year. Good answer from a talking dog. Good answer from anybody. What do we want from another year? Another year. Well, the timing is the same in our text for today in the life of Ezekiel. For as verse 1 points out, the Lord appeared to him at the beginning of the year. But also notice the verse tells us that Ezekiel and his people had been in captivity to the Babylonians for 25 years. Now with this as our background and backdrop, let's note first of all their difficulties, the difficulties they had, and they had a bunch of them. As their new year got underway, let's look at what they had lost and were living without. As captives to slavery, they obviously had lost their freedom. Because they were slaves to the Babylonians, they had no freedom or liberty at all. They had no rights or privileges whatsoever. They could only do what their captors told them to do and allowed them to do. So they lost their freedom. They also had lost their family and friends. Back when they had been captured by the Babylonians, many of their family and friends had been killed in the battle. And during the 25 years since, they had lost many more of their family and friends, some to natural causes and some to unnatural causes. So as their new year began, they were separated and split off, apart and away from their beloved family and friends. And then they had lost their fortune. When they had been defeated and captured, the Babylonians took all of their belongings, all of their property, all of their possessions, and as slaves, they were being paid the lowest minimum wage of all. Absolutely nothing. So they had nothing but the clothes on their back. Nothing but what the Babylonians allowed them to have. And then they had lost their familiar. Everything that had been familiar and known to them was gone. They now lived in a different world. They lived in a country that had a different language, different laws, different customs, different culture, different worship, even different dress and diet. Their former comfort zone has become their twilight zone. Their former comfort zone is long gone and has been for 25 years. And then they had lost, and this was the worst one, their faith. You know that after 25 years, they had to have been feeling forgotten and forsaken by God. After 25 years, they were feeling deserted, neglected, and ignored by God. We can read their minds, can't we? If he hasn't helped us in 25 years, then he's not going to help us or he can't help us. 
So after a quarter of a century of captivity and slavery, their faith in God had left the building. But now as we're about to see, God had not left the building. God had not left them as proven by what happened in our text verse. So now at the beginning of the year, let's look at the deeds of God. First of all, there was his coming to them. By the Lord coming to Ezekiel and laying his hand on him, he showed Ezekiel and his people that he was indeed present with them. That he was not dead, departed, or away or apart from them at all. No. He was present with them in their difficult time. And his coming to them proved it. And then there was his communication with them. Starting here and going on through the end of this book, eight more chapters, God constantly communicated with Ezekiel through both his visions and a heavenly messenger. Now this showed Ezekiel and his people that God was not mute, not silent, not speechless, that the cat did not have God's tongue. No, God was speaking to and communicating with his people loud and clear. And then there was his course for his people. Through the next eight chapters, God laid out his future for these people, his plan and purpose for their life, his direction and will for their life. Through the visions he gave to Ezekiel and through that messenger from heaven, God gave them a road map for their future to take. And then there was his concern for them. All of this that we're looking at, his coming to them, his communication with them, and his course for them showed them that again, he had not forgotten or forsaken them. He was not ignoring them or neglecting them, that he had not deserted them, no. All of this proved to these people that God was still concerned for them, that he still cared about them, that he still loved them with all of his heart. And then there was his control over them. By God doing all of this, he was showing his people that it was he and not the Babylonians who was the one who was actually in control and charge. Now the Babylonians seemed to be on top, but God's letting his people know that he's the one who's really on top. He's the one really running the show and calling the shots, and it is he and not the Babylonians that will have the last laugh and the last word. Yes, the Babylonians were big and strong and mighty, but their God was much bigger, much stronger, and much mightier. Now, let's bring this here to our lives at the beginning of this year for us. There are several of us here today who are dealing with and going through some difficult times and trials. There are several of us here today who are dealing with some form and type of captivity in some area of our life. But I want you to know this. At the beginning of this another year, God has come to you. God is present with you. I want you to know that God is communicating with you, speaking to you through his son, his scripture, his spirit, and supplication. I want you to know that God has a course for you, a plan and a purpose laid out for you. I want you to know that God is concerned for you, that he cares about you, and that he loves you. And I want you to know that God is in control even though things may seem to be out of control. I want you to know that he's still sitting on his throne, still wearing his crown, still holding his scepter. I want you to know that he's the one in charge and that he will have the last word. You hang and hold on to that as you go into this another year. I leave you with this fascinating fact. I found out in working on this message that if you go to the last chapter of Ezekiel, 
You go to the last verse of the last chapter. And you go to the last four words of the last verse of the last chapter of Ezekiel. You know what those four words are? The Lord is there. We're here at the beginning of another year. And yes, he's here. But he's also there. Waiting for us to get there. The Lord is there, folks. Let me tell you what that means. No matter what this new year brings to us, he will be there with us and for us. No matter if this new year knocks us down or lifts us up, He is there with us and for us. No matter if this next year makes us glad, sad, or mad, He will be there with us and for us. This next year is going to bring changes to all of us. Every year does, and this year will be no different. But no matter what those changes are, and no matter what they bring, the Lord is there with us and for us. And think about this as we close. What do we know for sure, for certain, with 100% absolute certainty about this next year? Nothing. Oh, we got our plans. We got our appointments. We got our schedules. But what do we know for certain is going to happen this next year? One thing. One thing. The Lord is there. The Lord is there. And if you stop and think about it, that's all we need to know. That's all we need to know. Praise the Lord. As another year comes, the Lord is there.